Hello YouTube, welcome back to Nutkin Farm. It's been a while since I did an update but we've now reached December 2022 and things are looking very green around the place. There's a lot of grass to mow and I'm about to get stuck into that but thought I'd have a little chat with you first. Um, you can see here the edge of block two um, and I've got two bits of bad news and one bit of good news so um, we'll start with the bad news first the nut set and this is not just me it's around the northern rivers the nut set's been pretty poor this season and it um, you know follows Peter Fraser's old advice um, that is when it rains during the flowering period you don't tend to get a good year and we had quite a bit of rain in Rosebank in particular and so what you can see here um, two big nuts and one small one and I, I think these big nuts on the three four fours actually have come from the pre-season flowering in a time that was a little drier um, you know these nuts that you see right here look like the kind of size you know they're sort of the size of a five cent piece in diameter you'd think they're the ones that'll probably be harvested in time around about March or so um, when when you expect them to drop from three four fours but yeah you've got some rather large nuts that look like they really were the result of um, the pre-season flowering overall though not much crop load in the tree um, and um, as I mentioned in an earlier video, look, I'm not too worried about the crop this year. The price we're going to be paid for it is probably going to be dismal. And, you know, there's only so much effort that I'm going to put in. I have had a spray done, uh, a very thorough spray, a mix of Indoxicarb, Trivore, and um, there's a new uh, fungicide that's pretty good, a Belantil, I think it's called. Um, and you know it'll it'll probably see the crop through to harvest if I spend uh, but I, I may spend the money on another spray later again as part of my budgeting decision I'm not doing the cards for trichogramma wasps and nut borer this season um, weighing up the potential return and everything I thought look wasn't worth um, wasn't worth the expenditure so these are the sort of decisions that you make and um, I think Matty Kelby said it best when he goes, look, you know, feed the trees and as far as crop goes, what you get, you get. And um, that's pretty much how I'm going to deal with it. Moving through block two, particularly in the um, areas of three, four, fours that haven't got a hell of a lot of sunlight, I don't see much crop still. There probably is some up the top of the trees, not enough to make me rich. Um, but um, yeah, look, it's, it's one of those things with three, four, fours. When they're young and they've got a lot of access to sunlight, they do seem to crop very well. But once they lose their sun, they're quite sensitive to that. And you end up, uh, you end up with poor results unless you do active canopy management. And um, that's just how they roll. Um, and they're, they're fairly tall trees because they're what's called an upright tree as opposed to a spreading tree. So they like to visit the stars on a regular basis. The other bit of bad news, and this is really sad, is that um, it seems that the Australian Macadamia Channel, um, run by my long-lost friend Garth, um, has disappeared entirely off the internet. Um, I cannot find any trace of Garth's videos. I don't know what's happened, whether the channel's been deleted or lapsed for inactivity. I, I don't think YouTube deletes things for inactivity. Um, but yeah, there's a whole swathe of about, I don't know, he did about 100 videos. Um, some of which are absolutely relevant to today, and it's such a shame to lose them. Um, because I've often gone back and listened to Garth's words of wisdom when it comes to macadamia farming. And while some of what he says is probably a bit out of date, particularly in terms of pricing and, and, and what level you invest in a farm, there's such good advice about how to choose a farm and um, uh, the lessons you, you learn from spending money and not spending money on things that could be a waste of money. Um, so, Garth, if you're listening, please, please, if you can put them back up, those things are absolute gems. Um, for those of you who... Uh, many of you who subscribe to my channel are also subscribers to his um, and um, I know you'd, you'd feel the same so 
Um, Garth, if there's a chance you could put them back up, mate, please do. We love you. Um, now, look, for some more interesting good news, um, I've often banged on about cross-pollination and... Um, you know, we now know, and it's pretty scientifically established, that having good cross-pollination results in more yield and now less shedding of nuts during the, the season where the tree in late spring decides to drop nuts that it doesn't want. Um, we've, we've worked out that those drop nuts are often self-pollinated nuts, and, and um, we've also worked out that self-pollinated nuts that go to maturity tend to be smaller and less rewarding for the farmer. So we know those things. But the research I was really interested in and mentioned last year was research into what kinds of cross-pollination produce the best, best nuts. So it's a form of matchmaking, if you like. So if you pair up one variety of tree and have it pollinate another variety of tree, what kind of result do you get in terms of kernel size and recovery? And um, you, me, all of us were the product of, were the product of our parents. And you hope, I suppose, that if you pick a parent with certain traits, it might come out in the, the offspring. Um, and so, if you took a small nut, like for example a seven four one, and cross pollinated it with a big nut, you might get a big nut as crop. And of course, these are non scientific assumptions, and they needed to be tested scientifically. And I'm happy to say that's now been done and it's the results are early days but there's some really interesting results coming in um, and a lot of study now published in the Australian Macadamia Society Journal has given us a great guide about what to plant with what in order to get the best nuts or at least the biggest nuts. So here is a summary of that news. If you're growing 246s, for example, and they self-pollinate, your average kernel mass is 2.23 grams. It's a you know average to larger than average nut. But if it cross-pollinates with other nuts, the kernel size grows up. And the key match for 246 is 508. Now, um, that's good news, I know, from my mate Bruce Chester, who grows 246s and 508s. Turns out they make a very happy marriage, and instead of having 2.23 grams a kernel, you go up to 2.8 grams a kernel. And if you're thinking in terms of turn kernel recovery, you go up from 30.4% kernel recovery to 35.2% kernel recovery. And given that that's a, a key measure on which you're paid, the amount of kernel recovery, that is a massive difference in the profitability of a crop you get from two, four, six trees. Um, other cross-pollination um, benefits, I mean, there, there are ones that come in with a marginal increase. Um, 246 crossed with 344 is fairly common in the Northern Rivers, and the good news is you do get some benefit from that. Um, you get a kernel mass of 2.56 and a kernel recovery of 33%, which is bang on the industry standard. So there's still some benefit to cross-pollinating those two varieties if they're in an old orchard, and they often are. Moving on, 344. What is the best match for a 344? Well, believe it or not, crossing them with big nuts doesn't necessarily get you the right result. But the best match for a 344 is Dadow. That's an old New South Wales variety that, um, that's still grown very tough, can survive in difficult circumstances, but has a bit of stick tide and has a, has a few other issues. Um, so it's not super widely grown. Still around. But um, Dadao is the is the best because you know a three four four nut that's self pollinated averages at one point eight seven grams, but if you cross pollinate with Dadao, it's two point seven seven grams. You know, basically 0.9 of a gram per nut more. And uh, three four four self pollinated is only twenty six percent kernel recovery, but Dadao pushes that up to thirty two point eight. Um, Others that you could cross-pollinate with with a slightly worse result are 849 and 842. And um, so there's, there's, an interesting, um, there's an interesting match for you. Um, and 344 cross-pollinated with 246 
is also okay, um, but you know you only get to about 31% kernel recovery with those crosses. So the match of 344 and 246 does have some merit to it, but it's not not the optimum and this this testing is absolutely fascinating on that point now 741s 741s do have the capacity to self-pollinate and that's great except that when they do self-pollinate the kernel size tends to be about 1.95 grams and you've got a kernel recovery of just under 34 percent you can do a whole lot better cross-pollinating it with believe it or not a16 now, when you cross-pollinate with A16, your kernel mass jumps from 1.95 grams to 3.46. That is a huge jump. And your kernel recovery goes from 33.9 to 39.7. So the mix of 344 and 741, which you often see in, in the Bundaberg region, is actually a really good pair. Now, I'm a little bit cynical in that I'm fairly sure that the 741 flowers a lot earlier than the A16 but uh, certainly in this trial they got them to cross pollinate and A16 turned out to be its best pollinator and it was way ahead of anything else I mean there's the 842 was okay but you, you only got to about 2.6 grams a kernel um, and 37% kernel recovery if you cross with an 84 and 842 which is also fairly late flowering as I understand it um, a29, this is grown down in the Nambucca area. When you cross-pollinate A29 with 741, you do get quite a nice boost. Um, that was the only one that they've published test results for. But you jump from 35.4% kernel recovery to 37.7. Your kernel mass goes up from 2.95 to 3.14. So a nice little boost, but not, not huge. Um, Dadao is interesting in that um, while Dadao is the, the excellent pair for 344, um, it's not a real benefit to Dadao itself um, to, to have it. It does, include, it does increase kernel recovery, um, but it doesn't increase kernel mass for some reason. So, you know, Dadao by itself is 35.7% kernel, goes up to 40% kernel, with a cross on 344, um, but the kernel mass is pretty much the same. Um, 849 is a better pair for Dead Owl. So if you wanted to make the ideal match, then it seems like Dead Owl and 849 should marry. Beaumont. Now, that made me laugh. The, these test results were part of the South African contribution to the trial, where Beaumont is one of the staple varieties. It's, it's one of the rootstock varieties used in Australia now, but not the dominant one. Those of you who grow Beaumont will get the best result um, by some margin, crossing it with 788. Now, I think I'm the only farmer in New South Wales growing 788. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you can get 788 from the Australian Macadamia Nursery, which is Marco Prenzel up in, um, up in Woolvey in Queensland. But um, it's not cultivated. But, you know, you can turn Dadao from 38% kernel recovery way up to 44% kernel recovery if you cross it with a 788. Um, the other reasonable crosses are 814 and 816, um, but, um, but there you go. There's a reason to grow 788 if you're, a, um, if you're a grower of Beaumont as a crop. And finally, 816, the last one mentioned in the study. Um, 816 by itself is quite a big nut, 2.74 grams. Um, at 49% kernel recovery. That's just cross, that's just self-pollinated. But um, cross it with Beaumont and you get up to 52.4% kernel recovery. But the real out of the out of the box pair for it is the 741. If you cross 816 and 741, you'll get up to 52.8% kernel recovery. Um, and but but a slightly smaller kernel size than with than with Beaumont. So yeah, the the, the biggest kernels you're going to get are with Beaumont, 3.35 grams. 741 you get 2.95 grams. But there's the 
there's the interesting results that are coming back from these studies and we can expect to see many more varieties crossed with each other and and I think you know from this you'll get a a body of work that will guide farmers as to what to plant in the first place you know which which are we going to sort of select to grow with each other um, obviously you've got to pay attention to what flowers at the same time because you don't get cross-pollination unless you've got pollen at the same time but um, what a great development you know we'll be able to get some guidance now on what to plant with what and and macadamia farmers both amateur and professional can be professional matchmakers of nuts and and the trees will help each other produce at their very best and when we're talking about things like you know kernel recovery you know each percentage point can get you you know 20 30 cents up to 20 or odd 30 odd cents a kilo more for your crop and um, certainly in these times of tight pricing that is something that farmers sit up and take notice of Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I'll be uh, back soon. I plan to do my macadamia baby parade, which I'm very excited about for the third year. And um, stay tuned for that. That's coming soon. Bye for now.